And that is the arrest of this guy for the anti-Jewish death threats on Cornell campus. Um, the guy's been arrested. His name is Patrick Dye, D-A-I, 21-year-old engineering student, um, a junior. He's from Pittsburgh, New York. He posted messages on this online campus chat thing like, fuck Israel, you should slit the Jews' throats. He personally threatened to kill Jews. He said he was going to uh, bring an assault rifle to campus and on and on it went. Now his parents are speaking to the New York Post saying he was depressed. He was severely depressed mm -hmm. and that's what led him to do it. I don't know, Maureen, whether he was depressed. I don't really care whether he was depressed mm -hmm. or not. That kind of rhetoric actually can get people spun up. Maybe he was planning on doing it himself. Maybe he wasn't. But it's just probably the most extreme example of what we're seeing on so many college campuses right now. It is. And it's. I was having this conversation last night, actually. I find it all the more shocking it's happening in New York, um, a heavily Jewish city. I find it shocking the level of anti-Semitism that has sprung up in just the past few weeks that now feels emboldened to be out in the open. I was listening the other night to a student who had been behind the barricaded door at another university in New York City. Cooper Union? Yes. She was saying something that I found had been left out of a lot of reportage, which was the Jewish students who were taking refuge in this room got in this room, closed the door, and then realized the door did not lock from the inside. The door only locked from the outside. So here are these pro-Palestinian agitators coming after them, and you can only imagine the thoughts that are going through their minds. All they have to do is lock the door, set a fire. I mean, nothing is off the table right now. Mm -hmm. And it's it feels a little bit it's a low bar to say it's heartening that this student has been arrested. Yeah. One of many who have given voice to who this. Who knows if they even would have sent the cops to go look into this if finally they hadn't gotten loud at Cornell. The Jewish students there have been through it mm -hmm. these past few weeks. Like Cornell's done absolutely nothing. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they've really let these Jewish students, you know, fend for themselves. Don't go to the dining hall. You might not be safe. That's not the answer. You will go safe. You will you will be safe. I, as the president of the university, will eat there every night myself. Yes to make sure that you are safe. And I will bring in, I will spend endowment money to bring in security, to bring in police. It's not you stay home. So great, okay, they arrested the guy who was making actual death threats, but I'm not exactly ready to take out my violin for the administrators, Never mind this guy. Well, did you say, Steve, that we have that soundbite Maureen was talking about of, the, of one of the girls who was in Cooper Union? Oh, okay. Okay, let's play soft four. Fuck, Fuck you, fuck you Israel. Israel, bitch. What? Fuck you, Israel. Fuck these are our family members. We have family there. Fuck you, bitch. Fuck that one, my sister. Fuck you, too, bitch. And Israel. Don't rip down these posters. Fuck you in that propaganda. You know what I'm just realizing? I'm pretty sure that's my old apartment building. <laughs> I'm pretty, I lived in a building that was more, mostly Orthodox. Uh, we were like one of the only Gentiles. We were so well treated and well loved, but I, we felt like honorary Jews. Mm -hmm. We went to so many Shabbat dinners, but I recognize the church across the street. And um, there's there's a very high Jewish population on the Upper West Side. That's where they were. They're thugs. Those they, They're women. It's usually a term we associate with men. They're thugs. They're disgusting. And it's happening, like you point out, in, in a Jewish enclave. Mm -hmm. I mean, everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's terrifying. I mean, to see the stars of David spray painted on homes in Paris and New York. It, it, right. it, it's shocking. It's, you know, I was listening this morning to one of the New York Times' podcasts, the daily coverage yeah. of this war. And they, they devoted half an hour to talking about how unfair it was of Israel not to give the Palestinians and the world at large basically their playbook for how they're going to retaliate, how they're going to try to recover these 200 hostages that let's be real, Hamas is using as human shields mm -hmm. to see these protesters, many of whom in New York City identify as non-binary LGBTQ+, right. waving the Palestinian flag, when this is a group that would throw you off the nearest roof at the first available opportunity is mind blowing. And to your point, about the universities and their spineless reaction to this anti-Semitism, all you have to do is imagine 
any other cohort threatened in such a manner, any other minority cohort and the reactions on these left-leaning campuses. Mm -hmm. They say that the way to determine whether it's anti-Semitism, because you can criticize the Israeli government all you want. Mm -hmm. I mean, many in this country have been doing that very robustly for the past year plus, as they've had this massive judicial dispute over there, the internal Israeli politics. Many people have been critical of Israel, of Netanyahu. That's not anti-Semitism. This is. And they say the definition is, one of the definitions of anti-Semitism is, if, if it's reserved for this group, if you wouldn't be getting into these criticisms, if it were another group, then it's anti-Semitism. And since when, you know, I was talking the other day about 9-11 and we went and we bombed the hell out of Afghanistan. Nobody was going into Afghani villages and saying, reporting live on the number of civilians who have been taken out by the U.S.'s latest bomb. It was over here too, bomb them to smithereens. We're sad if civilians get caught in the crossfire, but this is about making sure the people who tried to kill us can come back and try again. You know, and that's what Israel's saying, but totally different standard. Totally different standard. And the lack of moral clarity, you know, again, goes unremarked upon in most of the media. It was over two weeks before Israel began its incursion. Over two weeks, that shows remarkable restraint. It says a lot about the power of American foreign policy that they did hold back. The lack of moral clarity in the immediate aftermath of the Hamas terrorist attack, when you saw leftist groups in this country begin to co-opt the paragliders that were used to swoop in, mm -hmm. when you saw the unbelievable footage of women being kidnapped, that poor tattoo artist who we now know was beheaded mm. in the back of a pickup truck. Yeah. And the immediate reaction on the left in America is this is Israel's fault. This is all Israel's fault. They kind of had it coming. The same group that's been lecturing us in particular, let's talk about the women, mm -hmm. right? They want us mm -hmm. to believe they're, they're pro-woman, mm -hmm. that they would always stand up for women's rights. Mm -hmm. And they're like, mm, there's no proof of rapes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there is, there are tons of proof of rapes. There's firsthand eyewitness testimonials. There's women with bloody pants who then got their brains blown out. Um, we could go down the list, but that's not good enough for them. I, I don't know what is proof if you don't, if, if one person coming and saying, I saw the woman get raped next to me isn't proof, what is? But how about murder? Is that, does that get you upset? Because there's a lot of women murdered. That's not good enough either. And I saw you raising this point. It was a very good one about Alicia Keys, who I think we are on the same page, is lying about her initial support, and I'm sure it's sustained, for Hamas. She posted that ridiculous photo of herself days after the, the terrorist attack, and it was before Israel had really engaged in its response. Mm -hmm. So you can't even say, here it is, that it was about, oh, they were killing too many civilians. She's wearing, what, the Palestinian flag colors, mm -hmm. and, she posted about how she was, one thing she really was looking at trying, hmm, was paragliding, she was paragliding. And then, of course, and she had, to, somebody posted on two of her social media sites. It was like mm -hmm. Insta and TikTok, mm -hmm. or two, two different platforms. And then of course was forced to take it down when the backlash started to roll in. Mm -hmm. Now she's claiming, I just, I just like paragliding. What do you, get off my case. I'm very pro Jewish people and pro Israel. No, you misunderstood me. Oh, please, the four side eye emojis next to I'm thinking of paragliding, dot, 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 dot. She was all but smirking in that photo. I still am shocked that she has not been canceled by major corporations. You know, she is the voice of Allstate. When you see those commercials, that is the voice you're hearing, yeah, that exactly. friendly, velvety voice. She should lose that that sponsorship. She should lose that that job. I don't understand. And then to have Guy Osiri, who is a very prominent Israeli American, he's like one of the biggest music managers in the business, has worked with Madonna forever, U2 forever, two very always pro-Israel acts, come out and allow her to hide behind his skirt and say, oh, this is not the Alicia that you think. You know, we, she loves the Jewish people. She's pro-Israel. She, you're misunderstanding. It's like, who are you going to believe, me or your lying eyes? The brand new Genucel 3 is finally here. It can make your bags and puffiness disappear, along with dark circles, fine lines, crow's feet, and firm up your eye contour area. And for the longevity of your skin, this is the first Genucel to provide instant hydrating minerals, so it feels just like a facial at the spa. 
the new GenuCell 3 is included in the GenuCell Fall Classics Package at a crazy introductory discount. It includes GenuCell Jawline Treatment for a firmer neck and jawline. You get the classic GenuCell XV Anti-Wrinkle Moisturizer and the Vitamin C Deep Firming Serum. It's like a free spa treatment every day. If you don't look 10 years younger and get compliments everywhere you go, you get your money back. So go to GenuCell.com slash MK60 for deep discounts on this amazing fall package, or just call 800-SKIN-211 now. And for results in 12 hours or less, GenuCell's immediate effects product is included in this package free. Get ready now for your Thanksgiving get together. Go to GenuCell.com slash MK60 now or call 800-SKIN-211, G-E-N-U-C-E-L.com slash MK60. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.